Hey everyone, spring is officially right around the corner, so I thought that this would be a good time to sit down and talk about spring trends. Now it's fun sometimes to take it on a negative slant and go through all the crazy trends that the fashion experts have come up with and talk about what we're not gonna wear, but I thought it'd be a lot more helpful and honestly more fun to keep things positive and I wanna focus on the trends that I think we could and should be wearing, that we can wear, and they're, they're very wearable and we can start wearing them right now no matter what the temperature is, there's ways to adapt these things. So to make this the most functional way that I thought I could do this, I'm gonna insert a lot of individual pictures, I've made some collages, I wanna give you ideas to inspire you. Yes, I'm gonna have specific links to the specific pieces that I'm sharing with you from a wide range of budgets, but I also want you to look at these items that are not on the screen, but they will be over here. And I want you to look in your closet and see what you already have, because I am happy to say that these wearable trends that we're gonna focus on today are not only wearable for all ages, but they're things you probably already have in your closet. Let's talk about spring trend number one that I can get behind and that is a white dress. I have to admit, when I first saw this on a few of the websites like Vogue and Glamour, whatever they are, the experts out there, I think sorority rush or sorority initiation, but obviously I am a 50, almost 51 year old woman, so those days are far behind me. How do we make this wearable for a grown up woman like myself or like many of you that are watching? Well, obviously the first thing we can do is talk about the length. So generally speaking, I know a lot of us are more comfortable with at least slightly above the knee length, if not midi or maxi length. So that's a nice way to make it wearable. Also look for more casual materials, more linen, cotton. So I wanna walk you through a few of the items that I also have in my closet in various variations and that you might also as well. So the first one is from Free Assembly and this one is the only actual short one that I'm going to share with you. I like the drawstring waist. It's not a fussy, girly silhouette. It has pockets. And if you like this silhouette, but you're not too keen on the idea of a white dress, it does come in several other colors. Another idea that I think is really fun for summer especially, and that's the other thing. I'm saying spring, but as I am sitting here filming I mean this, it is 90 degrees in San Antonio. So we've hit summer temperatures already. Depending on where you live, this these trends can take you from late winter all the way through summer into fall. So this next one is from Amazon and I shared it in a pretty recent Amazon haul, but I shared it with you in red and it's beautiful in red. It's a really nice tiered silhouette. Some of you who don't like the big flowy, too much material dresses, I think you'll like this because it has a belt that's included with that. And so you can really make it a little more form fitting and it's not so much fabric, but it does come in a nice white version. Another way that I think this is more wearable for women around our age is it's a shirt dress feel and it has a collar. It's a little little more structured and not boho chic. And then we're talking about more adult grown up fabrics. So this next one is from Banana Republic Factory. It's a midi length and it's a cotton poplin. And it also is slightly sheer, which is a spring trend that I do not think is all that wearable. So I did not include that in this roundup, but it has an under layer. It comes with the matching slip. So you get that slight sheerness. Actually, I said it was cotton poplin. I lied, it's organza. So you get that beautiful sheer ethereal look, but it's, a little, it's not a big ballooning out silhouette of a dress. It's still pretty much a classic shirt dress silhouette, a little more streamlined. Another way to wear a white dress in maybe a more formal setting, doesn't have to be, but if you wanted to wear this into a work setting, I don't love the shoes that they're showing the model wearing, but this cotton poplin shirt dress, also from Banana Republic Factory, the cotton poplin is a little more structured. You can throw a blazer over this if you're taking it a little more corporate. You can add a belt to it in a, like a beautiful tan or cognac sort of color. I also want to point out that this is going to go well with another trend we're gonna talk about soon, the kind of preppy aesthetic. And then two more white dresses before we bump over to the next trend. This next one is from Avara and it's already become a bestseller. And this one is a little more casual. To me, this looks more like resort wear, vacation wear or summertime wear, but it also gives you that extra trend of a little bit of a sheer fabric. It comes with a matching slip underneath and has a slight ruffle to it, but it also has the self-tying belt and the buttons, so it's not super girly and young when I look at it. And then of course, my favorite dress silhouette and probably the classic, the Anthropology Summerset dress. I have 
two of them in prints. This one is a nice white solid. It comes in petite sizes, regular, plus sizes, solid colors, prints. It has a little button, hidden button here at the collar if you want a little more coverage. It's just one of those dresses that flatters so many body types and I love that they're showing it in white this season. The next trend I wanna talk about is a specific color. So the first trend was a color and a style of clothing, white dresses. This next one is just the color and it's sky blue, which technically this dress has a lot of sky blue happening in it. And you can go crazy with sky blue accessories like earrings or a purse or a pair of shoes to add a little pop of color. I'm gonna focus on the clothes today and I realize as much as I'd like to walk you through every single piece that I've picked out, that could get probably a little bit boring. So I am going to pop in the picture here of the full collage of all the pieces that I've shared with you. And then underneath each trend down in the description description box. I'll put the link to that if you want to look at all the things. I just want to point out a few highlights. So obviously there are some variations on sky blue. I mean, it can be almost neon when paired with this. It can be very, very pale pastel. It can almost go to turquoise and I'm gonna show you a few things. So that white dress that I showed you for our first trend, here it is again in a sky blue with the white trim, so pretty. And I love that this dress can be worn very casually, but if you have any spring events coming like showers, bridal showers, I say baby showers like that's seasonal, but I do find like a lot of babies are born in like spring. So graduations, Easter, Passover, all those things. This is a great dress. I do want to, of course, point out this dress from Walmart. I shared it in a recent Walmart haul. It is still in stock, y'all. Walmart is getting so much better about keeping things in stock. Not all the things, but many. So if you missed out on this dress when I first shared it with you, it's back. Now I know sleeveless is not for everybody, but if you are okay with bearing your arms, this bow tank, it's so fun. And even though it has the big bows, which is also a trend that I was like, no, I'm sorry. And when I say I'm a, I'm not for bows for grown up women, I'm talking about those big hair bows on the top of your head, or they take like a little ribbon and tie it in a bow with their ponytail. I just, I see that on tiny little children, very cute, but adult women, it's, it's, it just is odd to me, it's odd. So yes, I am gonna mention there's some trends that I don't love, but these big bows with just a very basic V-neck tank to me does not scream too young, too girly, just too much. I think it's just the perfect touch. If you missed my most recent Avara haul where I did share this top, I also shared this top that I love so much. I also ordered it in the dress version and this is a really pale, more sedate, sky blue option, but it does have a little bit of texture to it. So that's another way to incorporate it. And if you're thinking about colors to wear with it, like say with a top, obviously white anything is gonna work, but so will green, so will navy, so will just regular denim. You can almost look at sky blue as a neutral. It goes with a lot of options. You could do some color blocking with different kinds of blues, but when in doubt, navy, white, or denim look fantastic with sky blue. And then these two other tops, okay, I said I wasn't gonna go through every single one, but I'm excited about all of these. This one I'm ordering, I love it. It's from Banana Republic Factory. It's a double pocket satin shirt. I just love how cool it looks. I love this color. I cannot wait to order it. I'm thinking a Banana Republic Factory haul soon. They have some really, really cute spring pieces. And then this top, it doesn't look like much, but I do need to point it out because I just got it in the white version. It's a cotton slub fabric. It's a very modest V-neck. The sleeve length, I've heard from many of you, you're not comfortable showing your upper arms. I totally understand that. I mean, this is like what, okay. My, my grandma used to say these are her flags and she's waving. So hi grandma, miss you. Okay, but if you're not as cool as my grandma was bearing your upper arms in your 70s or younger, I really like the length of this, but more importantly, it's a cotton slub fabric and it feels so super well-made, like the quality is next level. So I bought it in the white, but I wanna show you that this is a very bright, kind of sky blue version that you can still incorporate into your trends. So this next trend that is very, very wearable is the preppy aesthetic or preppy vibes. And I know I promised you a whole video and I could do many videos on the preppy style aesthetic. I honestly have been waiting for the weather to fully change so that we could just embrace whatever season we're in. I feel like the last month we're sort of straddling a couple seasons and it's just not as fun to style clothes. So maybe late March, definitely in April, I'll give you a preppy styling video. But for now, elements of preppy style. So this is sort of an extension of the quiet luxury trend that we've been seeing for a little bit, the old money look, it all goes together. And it's also very connected to the resurgence in the whole 90s fashion, which is someone who went to high school and college in the 80s and 90s. I find this kind of like coming home in a way. Slightly different 
twist on it so it's more wearable, I think, now. So some key things you're gonna see is tone on tone, you know, more monochromatic dressing, stripes, horizontal stripes, very thin, very almost nautical, blazers, double-breasted blazers, buttons, collared shirts, button downs, trench coats, huge for spring, but instead of the full-length trench coat, which can be a little overwhelming and a little too formal and structured, look for shorter trench coats, just so it's more of an everyday jacket. A few pieces that I just wanna highlight from this collage, and all of them will be linked if you just click on the link in the description box or pinned to the top of the comments. The navy double-breasted blazer with the gold buttons, that one's from Walmart. It looks like a Veronica beard or Lejeans, Lejeans, I don't, I don't speak French. If it was in Spanish, I'd be okay, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It looks like, you know, a three or 400 or higher dollar sweat, uh, not sweater, blazer. That one is 42, not bad. Also the fabrics, a lot of cotton, a lot of natural fabrics, like even cashmere, like the Quince cashmere tee, I sh it's over here in the stripes. It does come in solids, but if you incorporate the stripes and the cashmere, yes, you can wear cashmere in the summer. It sort of self-regulates itself. It's kind of an interesting fabric. Boat neck, collars, stripes, all the preppy things, those are the hallmarks. It wouldn't be a spring trends video if we didn't talk about florals, and I'm not gonna make the reference to the quote from The Devil Wears Prada. The difference in the florals this year, it's not dark florals, it's not Little House on the Prairie florals. I mean, you'll see those, but this season seems to be focusing on bold florals, bigger prints, more abstract prints, brighter colors, not so much in the pastel. So I wanna walk you through a few of them. And I do find that this is a more wearable trend for the over 40, over 50, and et cetera woman, because sometimes when we go for the little floral prints, it looks a little too cutesy and a little too young and immature. That doesn't mean we can't wear it. You just kind of have to look more at the silhouette and decide maybe a more tailored version. But these versions I feel are very wearable. They're grown up, but they're not stuffy. So let's look at a few pieces that I think you're really gonna enjoy. So I have to again point out this Walmart dress that I own in three colors now. It's still in stock. It's so beautiful. It's a very abstract, almost watercolor version of a floral dress. And it doesn't have to be a dress. For instance, this next one is a top and just from looking at it, especially if a coat or a jacket, something over it, it's just a navy top with some cute white trim. Has really big, bold daisies on the sleeves without being too feminine and cutesy. And then even this next dress, it's a navy background. It's not a pastel or a white background and it's big, bright, flowers. The three dresses on the bottom of the collage are all similar in that they're not these big flouncy ruffly dresses. They're much more slim silhouette, much of a shirt dress style, but the prints aren't your typical girly pastel spring Laura Ashley flowers. And I do want to point out that sky blue one can also be part of the sky blue trend. And I did get it from Talbot's and I've already worn it twice and love, I love this dress. If you're looking for just the most beautiful, elegant, fits beautifully, wears really well, doesn't wrinkle once you steam it, that dress, I love it. And it comes in petite and regular lengths for sure. The next trend I wanna talk about is wide leg pants. It is the exact opposite of my favorite pant silhouette for spring and summer, which are joggers. And it's my understanding that joggers are still around, thank goodness, because I love my joggers. I love them in linen, I love them in tinsel, but this is the flip side and what many brands are suggesting that we wear in lieu of joggers. Now I will admit when I first saw this trend, I just thought of a more dressed up corporate looking trouser. And there is one that I do like wearing and I'm super comfortable in it. It has a flat front, elastic back, and it comes in different inseams. The one from Amazon, I think it has thousands of five star reviews. I have them in the short version and the regular version. And at five foot four, I can pretty much get away with both of them. When I was doing the research for this trend, they're suggesting that we go a little more casual. So in lieu of our favorite joggers, but wearable because you'll see them in linen or cotton, cargo you utility pockets to make it even more casual. So a few that I want to point out, I always go to Walmart for their linen pieces. As we move into summer, they're starting to already release them. These linen blend pants, perfection. And I love a linen blend instead of 100% linen because it's less likely to wrinkle. The free assembly cargo pants that I love, I actually wore them yesterday. They are still in stock in several colors. They're not a full on wide leg. They're more of a straight leg, but they're a wider leg silhouette than what 
I think we've been used to seeing in years past, very wearable pieces. The one I am most excited about, and again, I'm going to add to cart as part of my next Banana Republic factory haul. If you've been here for a little bit, you know how often I have recommended their tensile joggers. They've been one of my personal bestsellers for let's say a couple of years now. I have almost every color. Well, they came out with a tensile wide leg pant. So I can just swap out my joggers for these pants. As I'm filming this, they are currently $40 each and they do come in a huge size range. So I'm really excited about this. And if you're wondering, what do I wear these with? It just seems like they're a little more formal than a jogger. Anything that you wanted to wear with a jogger, wear it with your wide leg pants, t-shirts, tanks, sweaters for spring, throw on a denim jacket over it. Think of them as an easy, casual, everyday pant. And these are gonna go well with the next trend we're gonna talk about. Just let me get to it in one minute. What kind of shoes you're gonna wear? Just let me finish off a couple of recommendations. Wide leg trousers, of course, you're thinking of anything but jeans, but it also includes jeans. You know how much I love my Chico's trousers, my trouser jeans, I should say. We've all loved them. They've been a bestseller for me for quite a few months in a row, but they also have the high waist wide leg jeans, similar, but a little bit higher waisted, and they come in petite lengths as well. So I just wanted to mention those. Now the next to last, I added a new vocabulary word, penultimate trend that we're gonna talk about are flats, flat shoes. And I will admit, not as excited about this trend. I think everyone looks better in heels, everyone. I just feel like it makes my legs look short and stumpy and I've never just gravitated towards those. But I also am well aware that heels are not practical all the time. Many of us cannot wear heels for a variety of reasons or don't want to. So I'm trying my best to embrace the flats. And I will admit that a flowy wide leg pant paired with one of these flat shoe suggestions is not a bad look for spring going into summer. It's a little easy and breezy and elegant, I would say. So. The ones in particular that are really big for the spring, and I can't believe this because I have made videos bashing these. Ballet flats. Ballet flats are huge. And I, again, I'm like, oh. Here's why I don't love generally the classic ballet flat, but where I have found some that I do like. Usually they're a really rounded toe. So you're wearing flats, which just do not elongate your legs. And then you're wearing a stumpy toe, which just makes everything look short and squat. But they're kind of doing a lot of shoes now with more of an almond toe or an extended, it's a squared off toe, but it's like a longer, almost like a coffin shape. So it, it elongates the foot a little bit. They're showing a lot of mesh belly flats, almost combined with a Mary Jane look with embellishments like pearls and crystals. And I'm, I'm excited about that. I think those are fun. It's an extra little feminine touch without going absolutely crazy and being unwearable. I'm okay with that. Driving loafers are still very big. You're never gonna go wrong with a pair of basic white sneakers. I'll link a few of my faves down there as well. And the other one that I have shied away from for a while, but I have come to embrace as well as I realized that there are comfortable versions is the slingback shoe and specifically anything with a cap toe, like the classic Chanel. Well, we're not all gonna run out and buy a pair of Chanel shoes. There are lots of options at lots of price points. And I did just get this pair from Talbot's and I like that it's an adjustable slingback so I can make that strap as long as I need to so it doesn't dig into the back of my heel. That's what I was a little bit worried about and much more affordable option I have to say than Chanel. I do want to mention that I do have a dedicated spring shoe video coming soon which will cover a whole lot more styles than what we're talking about here but if I'm focusing on wearable spring trends we have to talk about flats because they're physically very easy to wear. I just feel like it takes a little more work to find a pair that are not only comfortable and look cute but make the whole outfit look cute because I just want everyone to just look and feel their best when they walk out of their house. And then the last trend that we're gonna talk about that I feel is super wearable and fits in with a lot of the other trends we talked about are belts. Belts are making a comeback. We're emphasizing a womanly shape. We are getting away from big and oversized. Well, I say that, but I've seen some big oversized trends, but you can wear the big and oversized and pair it down with a belt. And I wanted to share a few of my current favorites and some that I have my eye on. So for years, I have been sharing these skinny belts, they come in packs of three. They're adjustable, so they fit a variety of waist sizes. They come in a bunch of colors. It's a great way to streamline a bulky or loose top or dress. That same brand has an updated version that is more of a hook and buckle like that. I love how this one looks. It's still adjustable, and it comes in a couple of sizes as well. Very affordable. My go-to belt for spring and summer 
Also from Amazon are these stretchy belts. They come in packs of two or three in a variety of colors and buckle colors, if you will, and they fit everybody. First of all, they super stretch, there are no holes. You just put it where you want it. If you're looking for something a little thinner, I just picked these up. Same idea, but they are not quite as wide. They, they give off a more streamlined look. The buckle isn't quite as big. So I got it in, this is called brown, believe it or not. And I can't remember what this one is called, but it's the lighter option and probably the one I will be reaching for the most. Of course, you've heard me talk endlessly about my girl math explanation of how this Tory Miller belt is four belts in one. I will say another reason I love this belt and I will look for similar ones like it is that the end of the belt slides behind it. So no matter how much extra belt you have, it's not flapping around. It's self-contained behind the main part, which I think is a nice little feature. Of course, we still have these, the Gucci belts and all the designer belts. And the only reason why I'm partial to the Gucci belts is because it's Gigi. It's literally my initials. I have nothing against Celine or Coach or Ferragamo or what's the other big one, Valentino. But if I'm gonna wear a letter around like right at my waist, why can't it be mine? So Gigi it is. But I love that belts and accentuating the waist and drawing attention to the curves of a woman's body is in. So if my math is correct, I've given you seven wearable spring trends that you probably already have in your closet. So even if you're not thinking about trends, you don't wanna feel like you're chasing them. These are all just probably pieces that you've had from years before that maybe you didn't reach for as much. Pull them back to the front of your closet. If you needed some new shopping ideas, of course, I've got you all hooked up. The links are down in the description box, pinned to the top the comments and over on that QR code as well. I've only touched on a few of them. There's so many more. So I'd love to hear from you. Did any of these trends jump out at you? Are they things you're already wearing and you didn't even realize, hey, I'm trendy, how cool. And if you've seen some that you are absolutely like, nope, it's not for me. I think these people are crazy. I love to hear that stuff too. So please leave me a comment down below. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.